Today we're going to talk about the basic end stop switch with two wires. And I'm going to show you how to connect this today on the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.1. Now what you need to keep in mind is that we have three end stop switches on this board. We have our X minimum right here. We have our Y minimum, and then we have our Z minimum. Inside these pins, there's a couple of different things that you need to know. Starting with, you have your 3.3 volt pin right here for your X minimum. In the center, or ground, you have your ground pin, and then at the very bottom, you have your signal pin. So when connecting a switch on stop such as this with two wires, what you want to connect to is the ground and signal pins. So I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. Now, if you're looking at the wires, what you can see right here is a red and a black. We're going to use the red for the signal. So we're going to connect the black to the center pin and the other one to the ground for our end stop switch right here that will function like so. Now keep in mind that no one is paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial. And uh, I purchased all of the equipment with my own money, but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So what we need to do to program this is remove the TF drive or micro SD. And then we need to connect this into our adapter for our S disk or SAN disk. And this is our SD adapter. Now we're going to need to connect this to the computer and you may hear a beep. Okay, to start with, I want to refresh yet again on the pins. And as you can see, these are our end stops right here on the pinout diagram. So we have X minimum, Y minimum, and Z minimum. All three have 3.3 volts for the top pin, which would be up here on the actual board. The center pin is ground, and the bottom pin are signal pins. So what I want to show you now is actually how to uh, set up your environment. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Marlin Firmware. That's marlinfw.org and press enter. Then we're going to go to the download section. Now the build that we're going to use is not this one. This is the latest 2.0 build. We're going to use the nightly build because it's the most current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the zip, and while that's downloading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about the resources that are available. Because we have reporting issues, this means reporting bugs, but you can also ask questions here, so I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to show you that down here, as you can see, there are current bugs that were recently opened. You can read through these. Or you can search, for instance, if you're looking for the TMC 2209, which I haven't done a tutorial on yet, you can search for issues. So down here you can see that there's a bunch of different issues that regard the TMC 2209 with different hardware configurations. Keep that in mind because you can also pose questions here that maybe I have not covered yet in a tutorial. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go to the folder for our downloads and we're going to right click and we're going to extract. So what I'm going to do is click the extract button over here. And while this is extracting, let me let you know that I no longer use Atom for the integrated developer environment because it no longer is supported by platform IO for a plugin. So I will be using VS Code with Platform I.O. as a plugin. 
Now keep in mind that I've done tutorials for my SKR version 1.4 showing how to install this. So I'm probably not going to do another one for a while. So now that this is finished unzipping, I'm going to type VS for VS Code and I'm going to open up VS Code. And inside VS Code, what we need to do is we need to set up our environment. So inside your source folder, you're going to expand out your source, then your core, then you're going to click on boards.h, and inside here, you're going to search on skr underscore pro, but seeing how I already have it up right here, I'm just going to highlight it and copy it. Then I'm going to close out of boards.h. I'm going to minimize the core folder and the source folder, and I'm going to go to configuration.h. Inside configuration.h, I'm going to do a search on motherboard. And as you can see, the current chipset is board underscore ramps underscore one four underscore EFV. So I'm going to paste what we just copied, being our board. Then I'm going to scroll up and change our serial port from 0 to negative 1. And now we're going to take a look at the end stop. So I'm going to do a search on end stop as one word. And as you can see, the minimum end stops are enabled by default in the firmware, and the maximums are not. Now in this case, we're using minimum. So I'm not going to go into talking about the maximum end stops for this tutorial because it's out of scope. And I'm not going to talk about end stop pull-ups because there's no resistor or capacitor on these end stops. They're just simple switches that cause connections. So we're also not going to do pull-downs. But down here we have logic that we can use for inverting. So for instance, if you click on your end stop, and then in Pronterface, you check the status of your end stop with the M119 command for the G code. What you'll probably see is true. In some instances, you may see something not what you're looking for. So to change the logic, you can change the false to a true and flip the logic from triggered to open. But in this case, we don't need to, so I'm going to leave it alone. Next, we need to go to platformio.ini, and as you can see, our default environment is the Mega 2560, which is not our chipset, so we're going to search on it by doing a Control F, and we're going to search on SKR underscore Pro, and here's our chipset, which is Bigtree underscore SKR underscore Pro, so we're going to copy that. Then we're going to scroll back to the top and we're going to highlight our default environment for the Mega 2560 and paste over it. Now to compile, unfortunately we cannot do a direct upload which is a combination of build and upload because it doesn't work in this configuration as it currently stands, but we can do a compile or build right here by clicking the checkbox. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, now that the compilation or build has finished, and scroll up and we can check, see if the build's okay, and it says successful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to .pio and we're going to click on it, then go to the build folder, then Big Tree Tech SKR Pro. We're going to right click and we're going to go to Reveal in Explorer and click on that. And then we're going to go to the Big Tree subfolder. And as you can see, it's got firmware.bin. So we're going to right click and we're going to say send to after we highlight it. And we're going to send it to our SD card. Now we can check to make sure it's okay. 
by clicking on the SD card here. And as you can see, it's got firmware.bin now. So I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to place it inside the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.1. Okay, now that we have it actually in the SD card here, we're going to remove it from here. We're going to place the micro SD card or TF card into the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.1. And we're going to take the big side of the USB and we're going to place it here. And then we have to turn the power on for the USB. So I have the other end disconnected right now for USB. So I'm going to slide this in here. Now I'm going to take the other end and connect it to the computer. And it's going to begin flashing what's on the drive. Now that that's complete, we're going to go to Pronerface and see what happens. Okay, on my desktop, I'm going to open up the print run directory and I'm going to open up Pronerface. Inside Pronerface, I'm going to connect to the SKR Pro. And as you can see, it said connecting. Now it says printer is now online because it's running on 5 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type M. 119 and I'm going to press enter and see what happens and as you can see it says open so we know that there's actually something there because it's connected so I'm going to take my finger and actuate the end stop then I'm going to press the send button because we already have the M119 command specified so I'm going to click it again and now it says triggered so I'm going to remove my finger and I'm going to do M119 again by pressing send. And now it says open. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.